Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Daniel, co-founder and one of the CEOs of Cinera, the first visual programming language for engineers. And today I'm thrilled to give you a demo. Before we jump in, I would like to clarify the question, why do engineers need a visual programming language at all? For that, we have to check how engineers are working today. And to be honest, Current product development, especially in hardware development, is very old-fashioned. You have to deal with a lot of specific tools, starting from requirement management, going to CAD, going to simulation, going to manufacturability, going to reporting, and all of these tools are not connected at all. And every tool needs a high expertise. You have to deal with a lot of manual steps to come to a certain result. And it's insane to see that engineers are wasting at the moment over 80% of their daily time with repetitive work. And this is because of this rigid product development processes. And luckily, there's a domain like computer science, especially with all the power of the programming languages, which solved this challenge a long time ago. So our vision is, to empower our engineers with the power of visual programming to eliminate all the repetitive work they have today and to give them all the time they can concentrate on better products and develop them even faster. And how they can do this, let's have a look how this works in Cinera. So here you see the user interface of Cinera. It has two areas. On the right you have a viewer and on the left you have our canvas. And the biggest difference to traditional CAD systems for example is that you are really focusing on the left side like building up your workflow, thinking about the working steps you normally do and digitalize them. Um, I will give you a quick hello world for engineers to give you an idea how everything works. So on the top, I have a lot of uh, different entries here in my ribbon menu. So I will start with creating uh, a rectangular computation here. And on the right, you see already I created a curve. And let's define some variables to change the width and the height of my rectangle. I can connect these nodes together. So data flows from left to right. And then um, the computation happens inside of the nodes. So to come up with a beam structure, we create a boundary surface, we extrude it, this in a z direction, and yeah, let's change the value here to 100, and here we go, we already have a nice yeah, hello world beam. And again, we are focusing here on the way, so you can change every variable, every assumption you maybe have to or made down the road and everything get calculated again. So the next thing you would like to do, for example, could be to make some simulation to see is your design really valid? Can it um, fulfill all the requirements? And maybe you are not a simulation expert, but luckily you can reuse the work of your coworker who already were so uh, yeah, smart and nice to you to, to digitalize his working steps. So let's include their work into our workflow. So we have here a function called FEM and when I combine this with my output of extrude surface, everything is already set it up to perform a simulation. So now I only have to put in the solver and a node for doing post-processing and I can hide everything else and here we go. And this node here has all the working steps which is already or has been defined by my coworker already inside and I can just reuse his work. And this is exactly the beauty because I don't have to yeah, repeat this and I don't have to wait for my coworker to help me here. I can just use his um, yeah, digitalized work steps and can come up with the results here more or less in real time. Uh, the next thing is I'm going to a meeting and um, yeah, I would like to share some KPIs with the upper management. And luckily I had 
uh, another function already created from my previous project. It's a dashboard function. So when I look at to this node, I need the model from the simulation, I need the geometry and the load step definition, and I get nicely um, yeah, on the top right some KPIs I can discuss with. And again, when I'm changing the model here, everything gets updated instantly. So, but yeah, um, as you're focusing on the process, you can also yeah, manipulate the process at any time, right? So let's imagine uh, somebody will uh, give you some geometry from another CAD system. So let's import some data with our Parasolid importer here. Let's open the file pass. And now we have here some yeah, more complicated <laughs> beam structure like this one. And again, we would like to see the performance criteria, right? So what we are doing is we are just grabbing this wire here and we reconnect this to the new geometry. And now we are waiting until the uh, preprocessing of the finite element is done, then the solver call is running, and again, we get the new KPIs as a dashboard and also the, yeah, the model view to doing all the post-processing. So while we're waiting, let's have a quick look into the uh, amount of nodes we already have. So when you're starting Scenario, you already get access to over 700 different nodes in all different categories, starting with manipulating data structure, dealing with math operations, doing geometry operations like 2D ones, our surface modeling, uh, geometry solid modeling, we also have a mesh kernel, a vocal kernel, and a pre-processing and post-processing kernel for doing simulation. You can perform machine learning tasks. So you really have a lot of different nodes you can use to um, yeah, digitalize your working steps. And by that, we really do not want to reinvent the wheel. We open our system as a whole ecosystem so you can develop your own nodes. And we are also bring partnering already with one or with the major software vendors out there. So when we look into our current marketplace, you see that we can already um, yeah, use other add-ins here. So when you install these add-ins, you get additional nodes, for example, for uh, using your Abaco solver or Anza solver or other kind of technology to um, yeah, really use all the different um, components you need to digitalize your working steps. So the simulation is done and yeah, here now we got the new results. Let's have a look how this looks like. Here's the post-processing and we already get the updated KPI on the top right. Again, this was just a very simple Hello World project, right? So to give you some a glimpse what you can do, for example, I have another project here it's called the Steering Knuckle Project. Um, it's again just one example and it's uh, loading here in the background and you see it. This is a workflow which a customer came up with to automate their generative design workflow. So the idea is to perform a topology optimization based on a design space and this here is an automotive uh, part, a steering knuckle, where you have a lot of interfaces here. And then you have special um, yeah, areas in your workflow, which is normally, I colorize it here, normally done by different persons, or if you are in a huge company, even by different departments. So let's quickly go one through another. So the first one is normally you have to set up the requirements, right? It's a design space, the forces, all the stuff you need to perform some generative design task. Then in the next one, you normally go to um, the pre-processing, creating the meshes. Let's have a quick look how this looks. So we have the meshing here and everything you need for performing the simulation. Next is uh, you making a first simulation to see, okay, is everything running as expected? Then the next one is that you uh, perform the topology optimization. So this is normally this year, there's still a mesh, right? So you have a lot of artifacts here, but luckily you have another possibility. You can use nodes to do the reconstruction also directly inside of Scenera. So let's have a look how this looks like. So now we even have 
uh, NURBS geometry here already uh, booled and unioned with all the non-design spaces. And again, we can do a lot of uh, result evaluation, see, okay, what are the costs, what is our stress level, etc. And in this case, we also perform a lot of additive manufacturing um, processes to see how many parts can fit on one build chamber. So let's have a quick look here. In this case, we can place six parts in the build chamber. And you see already with all the different logos, these are parts from our marketplace, as I showed you before, so that you can directly integrate these kind of different technologies coming from different software vendors directly into Cinera. And here again, the dashboard I also showed you before, um, now on the top right again. Yeah. So, um, this was the quick demo of Scenera. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you now really want to deep dive into it and you also want to get your hands dirty, I can recommend to check out our free trial and yeah, try it out on your own. Come up with great uh, workflows. I'm really curious what you will develop in low code. And on the other hand, if you would like to have a, a call with one of our team members to discuss some uh, product ideas you might have in, uh, in mind, Feel also free to, to enter your credentials into our uh, forms and we are happy to get in contact with you. So I hope you enjoyed the short demo. I hope to see you soon and all the best. See you.